Hey guys, it's Bree, and thanks for checking out my channel, Just Breezy. Excuse the voice, I was hoping to give it a couple of days, but for those of you who know me, you know if there's something in my heart and on my mind, especially if it's weighing heavily, I tend not to wait. I usually push live and talk about it or make a video, and well, with everything going on, and I don't mean COVID-19, I knew I couldn't wait to express how I was feeling because what I'm feeling is so devastated and heartbroken. Like many of you, I have watched the news and social media over the past day or two to see the recording of Amy Cooper and the confrontation she had with Christian Cooper, no relation, in Central Park, where this black gentleman told this white woman who had her dog off a leash that she needed to put her dog on a leash. And instead of just saying, oh, yes, thank you, and going about her way, she called the cops and made it very clear that there was an African-American man threatening her. Racism at its finest. And then, maybe it was the next day, there was this horrific video of George Floyd. And as I even talk about it, it truly makes me sick. And I wonder the fear that man must have felt as he was pleading for his life, pleading to breathe, seeing that there were people around him whose job it was to protect, letting him die. And when I saw that, I thought, what the hell is happening in the world? But then I realized it's not happening, it's always been. And my naive white girl brain didn't realize that up until rather recently as an adult. Now this is by no means hating on cops. I have family members and very good friends who are police officers who I know are the good ones because there are many good ones. I heard somebody say, well, there are bad people in every profession. I'm sorry, that's not an excuse because not every profession has sworn to protect. Not every profession has the ability to murder somebody handcuffed, belly down on the floor. You watch that video and you see evil, you see racism, you see murder. Let's not mistake what that was, that was murder. Why there's an investigation, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why he's not in jail right now because if that were anybody else and they were caught on video murdering somebody, they'd be in jail. But there's a process, it's different I guess. Today, I read a blog from a, a woman, a black woman who has a little boy she was talking about when she goes out with her son so many people comment about how cute he is and she wonders at what age he'll go from being cute to being a threat she talked about this conversation you know quote unquote the talk that she knew she had to have with her son and growing up I had no idea again that there was this talk that goes on in families especially of black little boys, where their parents sit them down at some point and explain to them how they need to behave if they are ever in a situation where there's law enforcement. Now, here's the thing. I talk to my kids about police officers and law enforcement. Guarantee you my conversation is very different. Never once do I ever have to think my son will be judged differently, treated differently because he's white. I talked to him about how the police are there to protect us and how poor behavior has consequences. And now if you're ever in trouble and there's a police officer, they're there to help you. And again, again, many are. When I read this mom's blog, my heart broke thinking about what it would be to have to sit down with my son and say there could be a day where you are judged, where you're deemed guilty and wrong, where your life could be in danger because of the color of your skin, 
Think about that. If you're a white mom watching this, think about what that conversation must be like to tell your son that because the color of his skin, something he has no control over, something that should never be an issue, but because of the color of his skin, he could be put in a situation with people whose job it is to protect, where his life could be in danger, or he could be falsely accused. That's terrible. It wasn't until a few years ago that me as a white girl, white woman, met people that didn't look like me and the, my friends down at the soccer field, simply because the neighborhoods I grew up in, you know, it, it's predominantly white, Italian, you know, Irish, whatever it might be. And I started meeting people, different races, different cultures. And I have some really close people in my life that don't look like me. In my mind, I would always think I don't judge them or see them as a color. Again, naively thinking color doesn't matter, but it does. It does matter. I guarantee you, if George Floyd was white, that would not have played out the same way. My heart hurts so much for him and his family. My heart hurt so much for Mr. Cooper, who when I saw the video response from him, seems like a wonderful man, a gentleman, who again, if he was white, I'm not sure that Amy Cooper would have had that same response. Of course not, because she was basing her whole call on the fact that he's African American. I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. I'm not the person that's going to be. I saw a video of people looting a target <laughs> and calling for violence against cops. And that's not the answer either. But I will say that as a parent, we can't assume that the education our kids get in school about Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks is enough. That can't be the conversation, especially that us white parents have with our white children. That can't be it. We can't rely solely on curriculum to teach our kids about racism because that's the history. That's the people that in that time did something about it. We need to talk to them about the things that are going on now and what's acceptable and what is not. We need to have the hard conversations with our kids. We need for them to realize that unfortunately, color does matter in certain situations. That's the harsh, disgusting truth. They need to be the ones though that grow up standing up for people, standing up for what's right not perpetuating hate and intolerance and evil and racism. And that's on us. That's on us as parents to teach them that. I probably could go on until I lose my voice completely, but I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Please feel free to comment below your thoughts on this entire situation and we will chat again soon.